Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to check out five upgrades again that you need to do with your beginning mountain bike. And realistically, these aren't just the beginning upgrades. These are upgrades which everyone can do for all their bikes. They really change the way a bike feels and it makes a big difference on your riding ability and how easy it is to actually ride. First off, I want to say thank you to everyone who has subscribed. I am nearly at 5,000 subscribers, which is pretty cool. Keep commenting below all the questions you have. I'll try and get to them. I'll try and make as many videos as possible and we'll go from there pretty much. All right, let's jump right into this. The number one upgrade, and this is an important one. I do think this is truly the best thing you can do to upgrade your bike. Now, whether this is a Merlin 5 or a Trek Fuel EX 9.8, you're gonna need pedals, really good pedals. Pedals do not come with most high-end bikes, so you literally need to buy a set. And with an entry-level bike, you get very entry-level pedals. They're plastic, they normally have very little to no grip, essentially, and that is something you're going to need. As, lo as long as you're going to try and mountain bike this thing, you're going to need good pedals. Now it's up to you whether you're going to upgrade to a clip-in style or just a flat. I prefer the flat pedals. I just think they work super easy. Get a good set of shoes to them. It's a good starting point to do skate shoes, but they are much softer than a specific mountain bike shoe. You will pay a little bit of a good price for the mountain bike shoes, though. I currently run the Shimano Saint flat pedals. They have an insane durability to them, really good bite to them, and they have just worked out really, really well for me. Overall, I'm very impressed with them. I have tried out the Crank Brothers cleat system. It does work too. I just didn't like having my fit, feet clipped in, honestly. That's how it goes some people, so let's not get into an argument of who's riding what and what's more important. A good set of pedals makes a big difference on your bike. Your second upgrade I definitely think is worthwhile is tires. Now, some bikes are coming with relatively good tires. If you are spending upwards of five plus thousand dollars, you probably don't need to switch your tires right away. If you are riding specific terrain though, you may want to switch it out. If you've got an entry level bike, something like a Trek Marlin or somewhere along those lines, upgrading your tires will give you a huge benefit over many others in that kind of off-road terrain. It's gonna give you a ton more traction, a lot more control, and again, just make it easier to ride that bike. Everything I try and upgrade is for ease of use. I don't want to make biking harder for myself. I want to make it easier and easier. I want to be able to ride my bike as easy as possible with as little effort. The more you spend, the easier it is. It's free speed by investing into a few small things. Pedals, 65 to hundred dollars will get you really good pedals. Tires, you are looking at spending a little bit more, probably closer to 70 to 80 dollars per tire. And if you can only do one, I'd upgrade the front one to begin with and get that traction right on the front end. It's really going to make a huge difference for you. All right, so the third option, and this one can break a bit of the bank. It's not crazy, but upgrading brakes. This is something that can be done on almost every single bike. High end or low end, there's always a better brake to go with. So there's a couple different options you can choose to upgrading your brakes. One, even in an entry-level bike, a really good upgrade is to jump into a higher-end brake pad. Some bikes come with a relatively cheap metallic brake pad. You can actually upgrade to more organic ones, and these will give you better traction, better control, better conditions. They cost a little more, and they wear down a little bit faster. But overall, they're just going to stop you better, and you'll see that performance. Option two in this one is buying a whole new brake setup. Brake setups are relatively cheap. They can start with pretty low prices. Yeah, if you go after that Danny McCaskill stuff, it's going to be $500 upgrade, but you can get a really good upgraded set for a couple hundred dollars, and it's going to improve any bike. This is a Trek Marlin 5 all the way up to a Fuel EX. It's going to improve them significantly. Obviously, this depends where you're riding. If you're not using your brakes much, it's a pointless upgrade for you. But 
There is definite benefits to upgrading your brakes and overall, again, I would start with the front one if you only have the budget for one small upgrade. You can always upgrade the other one later and the front has the most braking power. The next upgrade I would do is potentially grips. It's not a huge deal breaker. Honestly, many bikes come with relatively comfy grips. Two, you will wear them out pretty fast if you're riding a lot. So this could be something when their first set is worn out that you actually upgrade and then get a new one. You don't need to right away take off brand new set and throw them out. That being said, every time you buy a brand new bike, it comes with brand new grips. So it might be worthwhile to keep those brand new grips brand new for resale, for any of that purpose when you're uptrading the bike and instead investing into a higher end set. Grips can go kind of one of two ways, one with traction and one with comfort. To a degree, you can only go so comfortable on a mountain bike, you can't get those big ones with the palm rest on them. You have to go for the more tractionable ones. If you're just doing commuting, obviously go for the bigger, wider one, but most people here are gonna be mountain biking, and I would recommend the Ergon grips or Death Grip. Death Grip is an insanely comfy grip, and it looks superb. It feels great, it works great, and it is actually a pretty comfy grip. They do shred up a little bit faster with those kind of inner ribs that they have, but overall, they do grip really well. It doesn't mean you have to hold on for your death for them. They actually do it for you. You can very lightly hold them and get a lot of control out of it, which is really nice to see. The Ergon ones have a variety of really kind of ergonomic ones, I mean, kind of self-explanatory, to more grippy technologies, I guess. I mean, they're just a little more tacky rubber that would come than compared to what comes with a bike. So this is something which I just think pedals and grips are two things which your feet and hands connect to. It connects you one with the bike and it will really improve the overall ride feel. And again, make it easier to ride. If you have a cheap pair of grips, you're not gonna get the traction you need and it's just gonna <laughs> slip out of your hand. That's really what it comes down to and that really is annoying. So this last one is definitely a bit of a stretch. It's definitely not the most necessary upgrade out there, but it definitely helps. It is a really nice upgrade. It adds a lot of comfort to it. And this is where a lot of controversy is gonna come into it. Carbon fiber handlebars. Overall, they look fancy. They sound fancy. They save weight, but most importantly, they absorb vibration. So your hands get less tired. They feel less fatigued, especially when you're holding on for dear life. Over time, it just digs down into you. That aluminum really resonates right through you. You can get some aluminum bars, which are supposed to help dampen that foam filled ones and such. It definitely helps, but a good set of carbon fiber handlebars help a lot. This can be a pretty major upgrade for anyone in a entry level mountain bike setup. They will come with a 31.8 bar and uh, normally a bit longer of a stem. This could be a great choice to upgrade to a really short stem, bring that steering control right up into you, get a little more feel direct out of it, and then also upgrade to a 35 mil carbon bar. These can range, so you're looking at 100 to $200 maybe a little more for the bar and stem setup. And it's actually just a mild amount better. It is noticeable side by side. You will very quickly get used to your carbon bar and notice no difference to it. But every time you get on an aluminum one and trail ride it, you will notice that rattling feeling through your bones. The carbon really absorbs a lot of it and it makes it a bit more pleasurable of an experience. So if you're riding a lot, I think it's a worthwhile investment. You can go to a wider setup, try that out, get that control system that way, and it really makes a big difference. Short stem, wide bars, at first feel weird, but then they give you a lot of stable control to your overall bike. Don't have to stick with a full 800, but I would recommend trying to keep it above 760 millimeters, really as the minimum. I run mine at 780 or 800, and apart from the old trail systems which are made for single track, for the most part, it works really, really well. All right, so these were my 
kind of top five upgrades. I've done a video like this before, but it's nice to catch up and go over and see if anything's changed. A few things have, but not too much. Like I say, all these are pretty cheap, affordable upgrades. Could be a good Christmas gift as that's coming up. Every bike is different, but relatively speaking, I've tried to put these in a pretty good order. The first two I think are very important and the pedals you must upgrade. It's a great Christmas gift. It's a really good stocking stuffer. It's easy to do yourself. You do need a 15 mil wrench or a pedal wrench, which also is another good, good gift because you may upgrade bikes and move on pedals, change pedals out. It's a cool little start to your own bike garage. The grips I think are an easy one to just upgrade easily without much thought and it will help a little bit. The bar is a bit of a big one. The brakes are an even bigger one. The tires, I think, will depend on what you're doing the most. Overall, the tires which come with your bike are designed for that bike. A Trek Marlin 5 comes with a relatively fast rolling, non-traction based tire. It will do very well in most of the off-road situations, but as you ride more and more and get into the worse and worse trail systems and the worse and worse weather conditions, that's where you'll notice you'll need an upgrade and these tires can vary. You can get some good ones on sale. Tan walls are always on sale because they're hit and miss in fashion. And overall, you can get a good set of tires. Even jumping to a beefier setup at a 30 TPI, you can stay relatively low priced. Or you can bite it all and go for the big ones at 120 TPI. And you'll be spending, you know, 50 to $80 per tire. And we're not even talking about tubeless here. It's hard not to get a tubeless tire now unless you go for the full budget one. And I wouldn't worry too much about switching out to tubeless. A higher end tire is going to be a little more durable. You'll have less chance of flats anyway. Like I, I would really put tubeless low on the things to do if you're on a Trek Marlin 5 level. And I would really put tubeless low on the things to do. Even if you're in an entry level full suspension, which is a couple years old, it will shave a bit of weight. I've never had too many issues with tubes. Tubeless does seem handy, but it's also a lot of work and continuum maintenance. You can go years without a flat, but guaranteed every year you've got to fix that tubeless system multiple times. It's a bit of a trade-off. I guess I'm not really still sold on it. All right, guys. Hopefully this was a bit entertaining for you. Again, thanks for the first 4,500 people. Hopefully we'll hit 5,000 shortly here. Comment below what are your favorite upgrades. I'd love to know what is something you change every time on your new bike. And otherwise, let's get out there and ride. Good luck.